the communist party says that either you are with us or you are not with us and if you are not with china the bri was you know uh, not opposed by anyone other than india basically so uh, if you are not with me then you are against me and the videos of uh, you know the pla in high altitude doing drills doing exercises doing jumps uh, their vehicle the technology being demonstrated and we like uh, you know good uh, uh, people Uh, we pass it on. We forward it. We are, we are, we are the fastest finger first. Everything that comes to us, we, we forward it. And that is China's psychological operations for us. So it is. It is not the LEC. It is not the you know the, you know trade rule thing they're looking out. It is a strategic signal they're telling us that we behave. See, uh, Chinese are Chinese are very sensitive to uh, the internal fault lines. They're very very sensitive. Uh, like I say, keep fighting, keep talking, keep trading. It's not only you know we can't be anti-China. We have to be pro-India. So he wants us to endorse and align with his national interests. We, he wants to. He's got strategic anxieties. He's got strategic concerns, uh, which uh, you know, which India can actually take advantage of. Uh, I, I, I salute Kal Santosh Babu and him because there are many galwans waiting to happen. It is not one galwan. There's spikes and the uh, you know clubs which have issued uh, to the troops in the PLA troops in Galwan. You would issue to many other subunits and units. It's not only in one particular place. 1959 line is uh, a construct of the Chinese. It is not our. We, we never recognize that. Line. It's a Chinese construct. How we endorsing it? I don't know. Line of actual control. You find so many people talk more line of actual. He's talking so many. Who knows the line of actual control? I challenge you. They don't know it. Well, everyone is expert today. Everyone draws a line on some, uh, you know, satellite imagery. He says Chinese have done. Agree. You, you, you interpret satellite imagery. You say this is what it is. But how do you position a line on a satellite imagery which you don't know? Jai Hind, then welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achin. Understanding your enemy and his moves, the Chinese three warfare strategy. To do just that, I have with me Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia. PVSM, AVSM, SM, who retired from the Indian Army after a 40-year distinguished career, which culminated as the Director General of Military Operations or DGMO, one of the most important functionaries in the Indian Army. He was commissioned into the Parachute Regiment in 1974 June, and has wide-ranging experience in command, staff, and instructional appointments. His higher command assignments include a Mountain Brigade in Northern Bengal, an Infantry Division. on the line of control and an operational core along the india china border general bhatia was also the colonel of the parachute regiment between 1st of december 2010 and 28th of february 2014 during his career his advisory skills in the strategic arena have played an inseparable part in designing the policies of the indian army today he was instrumental in giving a lot of force to the capacity and capability development along both the loc as well as lac thank you sir for joining me today to have a discussion on this very very important subject on the chinese three warfare strategy uh thank you aryan ji thank you very much and uh, to you and all your viewers jai hind jai hind sir so i'd like to begin by saying china post the ladakh standoff and especially the galwan incident of which we had the first anniversary just a couple of days away has come into the realm of discussions in pretty much on a daily basis among st- strategic analysts and along also the general public the chinese aggression which was probably tolerated before has now crossed a certain red line not just with us but along the world sir one upon a little bit of a study one realizes that the chinese follow a certain pattern when they are doing stuff like this it is called the chinese three warfare strategy to begin with sir i'd like you to explain this to us what it is all about and how do they actually go about doing their business uh i think the chinese three warfare strategy is a strategy which the chinese evolved uh, starting 2003 uh it is a uh, subset of it uh, of the chinese philosophy Uh, or the strategic approach uh, to the global order which is again based on three principles or three philosophies uh, the three philosophies being military cooperation wolf warrior diplomacy and debt trap from their floors uh, the chinese uh, uh, concept of uh, dominating the world and this is more applicable to its 27 neighbors uh, and part of the military cooperation is the three warfare strategy the three warfares be- being public opinion 
which is both domestic and international. Uh, it is psychological operations with a target and influence the foreign countries. Uh, and the last one is legal warfare. So what, what does China aim to do with the three warfare strategy? You know, uh, uh, following the Sun Tzu dictum of winning without fighting. So the three warfare strategy is a low cost, high effect way of influencing the uh, countries all around to follow the diktat of the CCP, not China, the Communist Party. The Communist Party is supreme in China. So whatever the whatever China is today, it is the Communist Party. And the Communist Party says that either you are with us or you're not with us. So that is the uh, cost effective way of ensuring that it's uh, not only the 27 neighbors, uh, but the global order also uh, is influenced and follows uh, whatever China's interests are, and they endorse and align with China's interests. So that, in a nutshell, is a, a part of the three warfare. And if you look at it translated, uh, you know, they translate the three warfare strategy uh, in uh, uh, Dolom, actually. We call it Doklam. So I'll, I'll say Doklam, but actually it's Dolom. Uh, I was a co commander there. Uh, so uh, in, in Doklam, they, they translated that. They had the uh, three warfare. And now along the LAC, uh, we see that being manifested again. And we see the same thing happening in the South China Sea, the East China Sea, uh, with Japan, Taiwan, Mississippi, uh, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia. So you name it, it is it's being practiced by China uh, as a low-cost option to make sure that every country is aligned to the Chinese interests and to the CCP's way of thinking. Uh, I, I do feel uh, that uh, India did not, uh, uh, you know, not, not only not endorse, but oppose the China dream of BRI and the China-Pakistan economic corridor. Uh, which is central to the BRI, that's the China dream. And uh, I think that is one of the major uh, uh, strategic uh, concerns of China. And I, I feel that is the strategic intent uh, for China to teach India a lesson to align with China's interests. Because China's sharp power is very, you know, China's sharp power, what is it? It's autocratic thing. Uh, we talk of soft power, we talk of hard power, we talk of smart power. China talks of sharp power. Hmm. A sharp power means that either you are with me or you're not with me. So uh, that is where China comes into uh, into play, and if we are not with China, the BRI was you know uh, not opposed by anyone other than India basically. So uh, if you are not with me, then you are against me, and I think that is one of China's strategic intent to tell tell India to contain India uh, within the uh, you know uh, within not the subcontinent of South Asia, but within India. That is how you see uh, it practicing a three warfare strategy of military coalition in which public opinion. Domestic and international, you find uh, is very strong. You find the psychological operations, you find the global times, you find the videos of, uh, you know, the PLA in high altitude, doing drills, doing exercises, doing jumps, uh, their vehicles, the technology being demonstrated. And we, like, uh, you know, good uh, uh, people, uh, we pass it on, we forward it. We are, we, you know, we, we are the fastest finger first. Everything that comes to us, we, we forward it. And that is China's psychological operations philosophy. We are in in actually betting what uh, aiding what China wants us to believe, so that we have to be aware. Uh, I will request your viewers to please do not forward things which you are not fully aware of because this is part of the cycle of operations. Then comes the legal warfare. If you look at it legally, also uh, he has been you know talking of uh, 1959 line. He has been saying that we have done 1500 plus transgressions uh, in uh, along the line of actual control in the year of 2019. So uh, this is part of legal warfare. So this is what China is doing. Uh, three three warfare strategy of China has to be understood. And if you don't understand that, like you rightly said, know your enemy, you'll win a thousand battles. So if you know the three warfare strategy what China is doing, and thank you for aiding or for you know giving a platform for people to understand the three warfare strategy. If we understand the China's intent. We understand the strategy. We can meet and mitigate the China threat. Absolutely, sir. And I think uh, where you're coming from is ap is 100% correct because if one actually looks at China's actions, the way they've gone about doing things is exactly fitting across to whatever you've just told us from their uh, philosophy of warfare to their, uh, you know, the three warfare strategy within the military doctrine as well. So I'd like to dwell upon, see, uh, we are pretty much, I think, uh, in today's world, people understand the milit the media war which is on, and of course, the propaganda which takes place around, and one is aware of such situations. You gave us an example 
of uh, legal warfare which india's uh, you know faced with regards to the 1959 line and so on and so forth around the world sir do you see any major example of a league of legal warfare that china has done against the country to get them on to his side or basically get what he wants see uh, china will try everything to uh, uh, get its uh, to achieve its aim but like all other countries so i i am not that way i'm not too uh, much bothered about the intent uh, but l- l- we should understand the modus operandi uh, how they go about it we should understand the modus operandi Uh, if you look at, I'll give you a small example which is understandable. Uh, I'll take the example of Doklam, 2017, right? Now Doklam has been there is a disputed uh, territory uh, between China and Bhutan. It's in Western Bhutan. It's not Indian territory, by the way. The the plateau is 88 square kilometers, and we hold the <coughs> western end of the plateau in a place called uh, Dongkalari, Tulela Ridge, and uh, the uh, eastern uh, side uh, is uh, Bhutan. and to the south is jamperi ridge which is again bhutan and also to the north is uh, across the sinchala is the chinese stretch right which will be well so what did china do we go as for the 1914 shimla treaty between india tibet and that time tibet because the china was not the china to put both of the data and also the chinese representatives of out there so what china says that treaty is uh, not a good treaty you know unfortunately the british left a lot of legacies uh, to, they were not very kind to us they left a lot of legacies to be resolved and we were resolving it we were living with it and this is with the indo tibetan boundary is only one of them so they did not uh, endorse the mac mahon uh, line as they say and uh, which says the tri junction is a place called uh, you know uh, gamochen right they go to the 1890 treaty uh, which they say uh, that uh, this territory belongs to china now uh, boundaries are based on history tradition and culture and followed by treaties so the point is that they have molded that treaty the 1914 treaty which was you know in a way signed which was agreed upon in 1914 uh, but today china doesn't take bhutan being a small nation uh, so it it try to uh, bully bhutan like china does uh, but then we have a treaty with bhutan a legal treaty with bhutan 2007 treaty in which uh, section 2 says that we will aid each other in terms of uh, in, in, in the in the security damage you know it's a mutual thing so we went in the aid of bhutan on the request and we stopped uh, the chinese from constructing the road up to jamperi ridge because it's our it's our uh, we are very sensitive to that because from there flows the uh, goes down to the three uh, ridges uh, on to a place called jaldhaka uh, which is the siliguri corridor and which is the corridor which joins up uh, which is the link to It and half states of our world for 5.5 crore people, so we cannot be, you know, uh, not be sensitive to it. So China knows that. So this is one example of China. Second example of the side, South China Sea, uh, the E Z, the what it is done in South China Sea, the islands uh, it's occupied. Uh, it is uh, with this regard to the, uh, you know, the International Court of Justice uh, gave the favor in terms of Philippines, uh, but China has not agreed to it. China says the UNCLOS, the United Nations uh, Lines of Communication, uh, the UNCLOS, UNCLOS uh, Treaty. is 1982 but their uh, you know it uh, their history in the south china sea predates that treaty so they go do they go by the history so they they don't give it it doesn't concern where it doesn't suit them uh, they say no this is not legally bound because this, this legal position is something different so that is part of legal warfare which china has been doing and uh, china doesn't you know really bother about the international norms the way uh, most other countries want and the democracies are different uh, the autocracies are different and uh, china has the is developing the uh, technological economic and military might uh, to do what it wants to do so we'll have to understand what china's intents are and legal warfare is and we'll have to defeat china uh, again in all three domains psychological operations public uh, opinion and also legal warfare if it if we wage legal war we'll wage legal war we not just try to escalate something but when we are we just said belam is with us the moral right is with us the justice is with us and the world knows that so that is our strength so we will play to our strength correct sir and i think uh, you know the reason why i asked this legal war question apart from the, the 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 influence operations that the chinese do is because this is probably the one of the most difficult things for anybody to understand that how do they use laws uh, this thing and you said it very rightly that they use the law when it suits them otherwise they will switch back to history and you know bring about a whole story and they've been doing it very successfully till now i must say so uh, there is one one more small yes, please uh, uh, of, of doklam you know the tri junction between india 
China and Bhutan mm. is a place called Batangla. Okay. Right. And to the south of Batangla is a very high uh, mountain peak called uh, Gemuchin. Mm. Uh, what the Chinese say, Komochi. So they say Gemuchin means trijunction. Gemuchin does not mean trijunction. It means, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the queen of hills. Right. So that is how legal warfare starts. When you start misinterpreting uh, the meaning of a particular feature, so we say the trijunction between India, China, Bhutan is Batangla, and they say it is not Batangla, it is Gemuchin. If Gemuchin is a trijunction, then obviously uh, the Doklam Plateau falls within China. But if Batangla is a trijunction, the Doklam Plateau belongs to Bhutan. So that is uh, how they go about it. Very interesting, sir. I think uh, multiple examples. I think one thing that came to my mind was TikTok in USA, sir. When Trump tried to ban TikTok, they went into the Supreme Court and they they upturned that decision. That was a part of a, you know, I'd call it a legal warfare that they played their own system within against them. And it's, it's very interesting. So you also mentioned that this is a, you know, this three warfare strategy is also a, not a very expensive uh, way of fighting a war. Wars today have become very expensive. Having said that, this also is a very, very effective way of fighting a war if somebody doesn't understand what the adversary is doing. Is this one of the reasons that the Chinese are taking risks on multiple fronts that we see today? So, uh, Ch Chinese feel that, uh, you know, they're the century of humiliation and now they are a world power and China, China, you know, if you speak to the Chinese and we should understand what the Chinese say, I'm not, and no, what don't, no, we don't understand what they actually mean and what they say. Uh, because if we do not do that, you know, again, know your enemy, know yourself. So uh, what actually China feels is that uh, they can get away with it. And uh, they have the uh, uh, superiority, they have the power, and uh, they have an advantage in being an autocratic country. Uh, it is run by Xi Jinping. If you look at Xi Jinping, he took over as the supreme leader on 14th of March 2030. So what did he do? The first thing he did within 24 hours, he signed the Gwadar contract for 40 years. Okay. So we have to look at these. These, these are indicators of a, of a he's, a very, he's a very strong leader. Let's not you know, deny that fact. He's a strong leader. He, he wants to get Mao Zedong, who was one of the strongest. So he, he did that. Then within a month, on 14th of April 2013, the PLA comes and occupies a place called Bottleneck or Lucky Nala in Devsam. Okay, they went back out 22 days. It's not that they didn't go back. Uh, it took some doing for them to for, for, for them to go back. But then we had uh, leverages that time, we had pressure points that time, and they, they, they did go back. But it was a part of a signaling which they did. Then 2014, when you were visiting uh, India for the first time, they come in China. So it is it is not the LEC, it is not the, you know, the, you know, the real thing they're looking out. It is a strategic signal they're telling us that you behave, you do things. So, um, so the, that is what we have, we'll have to look at China, the way do things are very cost effective, we are doing things like you rightly said, uh, very low cost but high effect. Look, for the last one year, amount of resources and energy, when we are battling the COVID, when the world is battling the COVID, what has China done? It has taken away the attention from COVID to the LAC. Okay. Today, India, Indians are, you know, they, we, we don't blame China for COVID at all. Mm. Whether it is by design or by default, the judiciary is the, it's, the, it's still out. Right. But the fact remains that they did develop the COVID-19 virus despite having signed the Convention for Biological and Chemical Weapons Warfare in which they cannot develop biological weapons. Is China being questioned? No. Because China knows it has the power not to be questioned. So we'll have to understand what China says. China is an autocratic country. It says, you're a democracy, but you don't make me, you know, it wants to be the world leader. It's challenging the US for the pole position. It wants a bipolar world. Mm. It wants everything Chinese way. And uh, we will have to, you know, uh, we'll have to understand them and then thereafter talk to them from a position of relative strength. I'm not saying that, you know, there's a uh, CNP differential. I cannot say that I'll be as strong as them, but I have to speak to them, talk to them from a position of relative strength, which is morally right. We today we are a risen power, we are a responsible risen nation. Uh, we are a global leader. We are a part of world, right? We have so many leverages. We have linkages with the world. Our soft power is recognized all over. You know, we have earned the respect of the uh, of the world, of the, the people. So we'll have to we'll have to how do we deter channel aggressiveness 
is the answer uh, is the is the question and we'll look for answers for that very very interesting so i think uh, uh, if if thought processes like this are discussed more freely and more often in india i think we would be able to find a solution so uh, one begs the question is the Ch- the chinese are waging this kind of a war against pretty much anybody that they call an adversary leave alone an enemy itself or even a competitor for that matter my question to you is are they ready to be you know uh, retaliated in kind within themselves uh, uh- Yes, I think uh, when uh, you know, uh, let's not undermine what China is doing. Uh, if they are uh, doing uh, whatever they are doing, and you know, the the world's five flashpoints of conflict have all got a China connect. I, I'm talking of major flashpoint. I'm not talking of uh, in the uh, in the low intensity conflict domain, right? Uh, whether it is the Taiwan, South China Sea, East China Sea, Korea, and the Indian Peninsula uh, and the India-China uh, boundary, they all got a China connect. So is China prepared? i think it is it is prepared it, it is prepared for that it is prepared for escalation but it i think well understands and appreciates that it is uh, escalation not in the interest of the us us is the only one who can challenge china right we can have uh, uh, multilateral uh, uh, arrangements like quad uh, but the us is the only one who can actually challenge china i would us is there's an interdependency between us and china we have to understand that the economic interdependency is so much that us will have a lot to lose china will have a lot to lose so whether they both are prepared to lose i don't know so the point is what china does in a three warfare strategy the others will have to do bind to balance to contain china so china is prepared for that china is prepared for retaliation china i'm sure would be even uh, you know they, they uh, if you look at the modernization of the pla what pla has done you know they they followed uh, the us model the, the theater commands uh, which we are also now doing Uh, a little late uh, but then we are doing it right now uh, what china has done is that with that they are prepared uh, and especially with the strategic uh, you know assets they are prepared uh, to for retaliation and they are prepared to meet the retaliation and they are demonstrating their powers in all domains especially in the cyber domain in the space domain uh, they are really demonstrating their powers and in the maritime domain I think is uh, you know one thing that uh, begs to question the the kind of propaganda warfare that they do across other nations it is very difficult for any other nation to do something like that within china because of the close society uh, but although having said that one actually one when he when one does some research within china about debo trends and stuff like that there are various uh, online platforms that you can study where people talk about different things for example the one thing that uh, got ridiculed quite a bit within china was the three child policy they actually had a uh, ad for a condom which uh, had an underlying saying i'm leaving you guys have fun so there is an underlying sentiment which the world needs to realize where some kind of action can be taken uh, which brings me back i mean which we haven't seen a concerted effort from the world to counter china in its narrative within china and within the population of china because i personally feel that the only people that the chinese are scared of is their own population at the end of it so do you see anything moving in that direction sir see uh, chinese are chinese are very sensitive to uh, the internal fault lines they're very very sensitive and uh, the fact that uh, people have not exploited this is uh, the or nations are not exploited people can't exploit it. nations have not exploited it because china is a close society uh, we it, it is uh, you know uh, one or time you will infiltrate uh, into the chinese media but the chinese media is controlled the social media is controlled mm. the access to uh, social media is controlled so it's a, it's a very it's a, a sort of a different society if you go to china you'll understand what it implies actually uh, so you'll see everything uh, on the front, you know uh, what is visible to you is very good but what is not visible to you is not so good they 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 got the they, you know tibet is a, an issue uh, east turkmenistan is an issue taiwan is an issue uh, the internal fault line 95% of the population uh, is uh, you know uh, uh, is in the east coast uh, and beyond uh, of course i'm not talking of uh, you know east turkmenistan uh, too much uh, but no one no, no one is ready to talk about it mm-hmm. so there there are sensitivities with the world uh, has will be china sensitive i remember in 2008 and I, you know this is a a mess in the report i was the uh, a mess in china 
and uh, when the uh, olympics was to be held in beijing and the torch was being you know uh, torch was uh, the olympic torch was being taken in delhi she was called at 2 o'clock in the morning and told the olympic torch will be in delhi but to make sure that the tibetans don't do anything wrong okay so they're so sensitive to uh, to this and this is this, this i heard from a, from the hostel now okay so that is the sensitivity of china the point is that can be exploited the strategic sensitivities and if we want to explore the strategic sensitivity of course the china is crossing the red, red lines and uh, i think they will, at some point of time uh, some 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 of us will have to you know uh, start uh, and europe it was a good platform to tell the indian public what exactly is china trying to do so that we willingly don't you know uh, start believing in china start propagating what china does so these are the things we'll have to uh, you know we, we need more people like you to propagate uh, what is correct for us and what is not so good in china i think i agree with you sir because there is a lot that needs to be done with regards to uh, just a narrative war they recently did this to us again once it was done during the covid uh, peak where they were sh- sh- uh, showing a chinese rocket going up and indian graves burning on the other side and uh, recently again with the g7 they put us across in the ed- edge of the table which is the you know the dining table of the apostles and uh, where the elephant had a drip apart from that there's another photograph which i will show here uh, the indian person is shown as the good old darban with again a drip so they still consider us as a, as a pretty much a sick country and i think there is it's high time that we also put out our own narrative i completely agree with you so ha- taking on uh, and moving further with the discussion in india how do you think we are preparing for something like this against china because uh, the only way to beat something like this is to play the game if we keep ignoring it well to a large extent is going to hurt us in the long run yeah i agree with you china china respects strength and uh, we'll have to demonstrate strength and demonstration of strength is you know lsc only one part of it we'll have to demonstrate strength in all domains Uh, especially our maritime domain our cyber domain and i'm talking about cyber defense uh, our, our space uh, programs uh, we will have to keep uh, uh, like i say keep fighting keep talking keep trading it's not only you know we can't be anti china we have to be pro india uh, you know the trade has increased but that does not mean that you know we are uh, we have for, forgotten galwan no, sorry sir we are not forgotten galwan galwan is uh, the angst and anguish in every indian is this uh, the young generation was you know for, uh, they were getting over the 1962 and when galwan happened and they will carry this 600 million uh, youth of india will carry galwan for a long time to come mm-hmm. so Ch- china has not understood what it is doing well, the, 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 you know the communist psyche is such that they don't understand uh, what uh, the you know uh, what a country like india and indians are our pride has been hurt in uh, galwan so we'll have to now repay uh, uh, china Uh, by defending us in multiple domains and taking them on where where required it's not that we can't we are a big country we are a very very large country our, our population is with us our people are with us the uh, we have a national feeling uh, we we are a growing part we are economy also growing we'll take time we'll take another 15 20 years uh, but it is also you know that there uh, uh, that we'll have to make sure that china does not retard our growth mm. so uh, if we have to grow and match we not have to match china we have to look at the well being of our own people how do we do that is the question and that we'll have to do by facing up to china because if you don't face up to a bully you'll keep getting bullied yep. so we'll have to face up to china in a very measured manner in a balanced manner protecting our national interests protecting what we want to do as also projecting our national interests we'll have to project our national interests and for that whatever is required i think the government is uh, uh, very clear on this uh, we have done very well in the last year and a half uh, or year plus now and uh, I, i think we are building capabilities things are changing uh, so even you know the major changes major transformation is seeing i was part of the shikhar committee uh, which uh, you know for the transformation of the uh, of the combat effectiveness and one of the recommendations which has been accepted and which is in the news today uh, is the corporatization of the ordnance factory board Uh, so the, the, these are these are major changes these are transformational changes you know the negative list atmanirbhar india you know self defense so these these are changes you see not only this is i'm talking about defense but the changes are there even the prime minister uh, in on 15th august said that we will be taking out the national cyber security uh, strategy right so once the strategy comes up we we will build capabilities 
uh, for our cyber defense. So th- things are happening. Us, uh, uh, we are growing in so many sectors. Uh, the na- Navy is uh, on, a, on a growth trajectory again. And uh, one of the major concerns, strategic concerns of China is lies in the Indian Ocean region. And we dominate the Indian Ocean re- uh, region by, from, by, we are a peninsula country. You are, you are studying the peninsula, right? We are a peninsula country. So we are building capabilities. Uh, we are looking at the future, we are going to be future ready. It is a slow process. Yes, we are a democracy, we take our time, but we are slow and steady. That is true, sir. That's that's the main thing. I mean, uh, I think people get very nervous when they see something not moving as fast as they, they'd like it to see. And uh, I think one message that you're putting across is that things take time and it's not something that can be brought across every day that, okay, India has taken one step against China by doing this and this and that. It, it, it'll be a very silly thing to do so because the Chinese are sitting and watching all this and they will counteract each and everything that we announce. So, my last question to you, and uh, this I think will prove across the uh, mind warfare, I'll, I'll put it like that, the psychological warfare and the influence operation put them across to the changing the mindsets of or changing the understanding of an in, uh, of any action by the Chinese. A lot of people believe that the Chinese came to the LSE to grab two, three kilometers of land here, two kilometers of land there, some, you know, couple of fingers in the Pengong So and stuff like that. Personally, I don't feel so. Uh, I feel that this was part, as I think you've also mentioned uh, before, that this was part of a very, very larger narrative that we need to understand. It's not a few kilometers of land that they're actually interested in. Um, It is something that they want to do. My question to you is, sir, see, they've been able to put this point across within India very, very clearly. 1959 line, you know, you give us that 1959-1960 line, we'll we'll be fine. We'll be friends and talk and trade and everything will be fine. And a lot of people who are probably not understanding what the Chinese are up to would also somewhere down the line say, yaar, de do yaar, kya farak hai? it's just two kilometers of land, Deke khatam karo. You know, it's a, it's a thought that comes into a person's mind where he's trying to Understand why the Chinese are doing something like this. Now, this is part of a complete psychological warfare. Two questions. One, is it really that the Chinese came for this piece of land that they are uh, that they are talking about? And two, how were they so successfully able to sell this narrative within India that it's just that land that they want? Uh, one, I don't think that's uh, you know uh, uh, the boundary question uh, which is uh, on their minds. Uh, it is a bigger picture. Uh, it is it is not only uh, eastern ladakh it's not only 38500 kilometers of Sachin, which they already occupy in any case uh, so uh, you know uh, so he, his forward deployment doesn't uh, amount to much because these are areas which are inhabited which are not habitated mm-hmm. okay in, not inhabited these are areas which are snowbound these are areas which are high altitude these are barren areas uh, the uh, uh, value of the land out, out there is not so much uh, the fact is that he's here to tell us to give us some strategic signaling and I don't, uh, like you rightly said, it is not for uh, the tactical level. It's not for the land. It's much more than the bigger picture. Uh, as for the boundary question concern, I think it's a different question altogether. You know, he claims over 110,000 square kilometers of, of, of our territories. So it is not uh, not giving one finger or two fingers. If we start giving one finger or two fingers, and why should we give it? There, there, there is a parliamentary resolution of November 1962. We have to abide by the parliamentary resolution. And even if you have to change the parliamentary resolution, what guarantee is there that he will just stop out there? He will, he will ask, he keep seeing more and more. You know, uh, the the whole thing is a is a sub cheese. We'll have to sit down together and the and the there are special representatives, the NSA from the Indian side and um, uh, his counterpart uh, Wang Shi from the Chinese side, who who look at you know the boundary question. There were 22 rounds of talks which have happened. So there, there is uh, that's a sep- there's a separate thing altogether on the boundary question. So boundary question is not uh, the thing. It is not lo- looking at boundary question. Like I said, he uh, is implying that you either are with me or not with me. So he wants us to endorse and align with his national interests. We he wants to. He's got strategic anxieties. He's got strategic concerns, uh, which uh, you know, uh, which India can actually take advantage of uh, if required. Then uh, 2020, 2020 was a year of 70 years of India-China diplomatic relations. There was a number of things to be done. So he did not bother about that. So we'll have to look at the overall Chinese big picture. If we just look at the uh, line of actual control, and the army is very good. The armed forces will handle the line of actual control. There is no problem. We have the requisite sense. We have the requisite expertise, experience, and the resolve. 
So but he's been taken by surprise. We are not, uh, you know, we are a day after the one year of Galwan. Let me also say that I, I, I salute Kal Santosh Babu and his men because there are many Galwans waiting to happen. It was not one Galwan. There's spikes and the, uh, you know, clubs which had issued uh, to the troops, in the PLA troops in Galwan. He would have issued many of the subunits and units. It's not only in one particular place. But our ferocious reaction, our retaliation, our response by Kal Santosh Babu and his unit and his men, and there is Salud the Martyrs, that forced a rethink. And since 16th of June last year to the 16th of June this year, today is the 17th of June, we had no escalation whatsoever. We had no violence, violence whatsoever along the LSC. So if you, 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 know, you have to look at the positives only. You cannot say, you know, status quo is not going to achieve. We will achieve it. After disengagement started off, but look at it, there is no escalation, there is no violence. And that is because tactical actions have strategic implications. And there I salute our heroes of Galwan who made the supreme sacrifice. I salute them for contributing to this fragile peace along the line of the people. I think very, very wonderfully put, sir. And uh, a lot of people will be very surprised to hear the fact that, you know, this was not just a singular operation planned by ch the Chinese in Ganban. It could have happened in Mangongso, it could have happened in Debsan, it could have happened anywhere. We could have had 10 Ganwans all over the place. I absolutely agree with you. And the way you put it across, I think a lot of us will have a little bit of a jerk when we hear that. That, uh, you know, we have gone through something. So, but again, my the last part of my question, how was he actually able to, you know, he's packaging this very, very well when he's selling it to the Indian uh, media, to the Indian, uh, you know, certain people that are actually putting it across within India. 1959 line, this is the line, it is just this, it is just that. They're already sitting there. I had, uh, I have read certain articles which actually come around and say, well, they've already achieved it. What's What's the big deal right now? So he's been able to also package it very nicely within India and sell it across to a lot of people that are spreading his message as well. Wouldn't you agree to that, sir? Hey, we, we have our, uh, you know, we have our people, we have our own positions, we have our political positions, we have our narratives. Uh, but you know, to, to say, uh, okay, let me put it very frankly. 1959 line is a, a construct of the Chinese. It is not our, we, we never recognize that line. It's a Chinese construct. How are we endorsing it? I don't know. Line of actual control. You find so many people talk more line of actual control. So Who knows the line of actual control? I challenge you, they don't know it. It's a line, it's a line of perceptions. There are very few people who know the line of actual control. Right? Without boasting, I'm one of them. So uh, the point is, uh, no. Well, the, everyone is expert today. Everyone draws a line on some uh, you know satellite imagery. Says Chinese have done. Agree. You, you, you interpret a satellite image, you say this is what it is. But how do you position a line on a satellite imagery which you don't know? Whose perception are you giving? Like Indian perception, Chinese perception. Similarly, 59 line. Why should we, why, why should we endorse that line? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know 59 line. There's an India-China boundary question, which is there, which is 3, 4, 8, 8 kilometers long. The India-China, India, the India-China India, boundary, India, China boundary. I'm talking of that. I, I'm not talking of any other lines. I, 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 that is where legal warfare comes into being. Correct. What exactly you are trying to say? Legal warfare. So he's trying to you know propagate a 1959 line. What is 1959? I, I really don't know. That's a, that's a unilateral line. Why should I? Why, why should I endorse this line? I, whether it's achieved it, not achieved it, is a question mark. I will not talk about it because uh, boundary question is a separate thing altogether, and I will not talk about the boundary question. But the fact remains. That what he has done is not for the boundary. Uh, the bigger picture is there, and we'll have to look at the bigger picture, and then meet and mitigate the China aggressiveness, his assertiveness in all domains. Uh, you know, it is we, we if he we, he wants to keep us occupied uh, in the continental and uh, 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 on the land borders, right? And if we keep occupied on the land borders. I think we are only furthering his aims. Correct. He wants to keep us occupied out there. So we should we should look at you know that's what I keep saying his strategic intent has to be understood if you want to meet and mitigate it. Absolutely, sir. I think uh, and to all the viewers, I think the general has taken this question and meted it across the way it is supposed to be done because at the end of it, it is a figment of their imagination. By only discussing this fifty nine line, sixty line, sixty one line, we are actually validating his uh, his his narratives, and this is exactly the part of. The propaganda warfare that the Chinese are are fighting against us. This is exactly the part of the three warfare strategy that the general has brought out so beautifully in this talk. Sir, 
thank you so much for telling us one what the warfare strategy is how they actually go about it how with some examples of across the world south china sea doklam um i'm sure a lot of us did not know how the chinese are actually manipulating our own systems against us and they are building a narrative so one must understand and i think the general has brought out this one thing very very clearly is that the chinese will not take a step without having an implication to it they are pretty planned in their affairs and they are sending us a message that needs to be interpreted properly so thank you so much for spending this time to interpret that message very very rightly and putting it across and of course uh, my you know gratitude to the soldiers in galwan led by colonel santosh babu and i'm sure many others who were there for protecting that land which rightfully obviously belongs to us and making the supreme sacrifice that this nation will never forget uh, thank you adi thank you very much thank you to your viewers it's always having a you know this platform is very good i find it a very excellent platform a very uh, good conversation uh, with the two of us uh, very focused uh, thank you very much indeed and uh, jai hind to you adi and jai hind to your viewers jai hind sir